Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster, and today we are doing an in-depth analysis of Prada Fall Winter 2021 Men's, which is Dad Simmons' first show doing menswear with Grandma Mamucha. Real quick, since you're already here, you should definitely subscribe. I do in-depth analyses of tons of different runway shows to kind of uncover the in-depth meaning and the symbolism and the artfulness of designer clothes. When we all went into quarantine about a year ago, there was a lot of questions in the fashion world about how designers would handle this big, social change that was happening to literally everyone on earth. And this show specifically is one of the best examples that I've seen in those 12 months of a designer collection responding to current events. Because the concern is always that fashion is gonna get too literal, right? And some, some designers can make literal work, like when Rick Owens put masks into his runway shows, that was a totally seamless thing. It didn't seem out of place at all. Someone actually had to point that out to me for me to even notice that something was different. But most of the time when fashion designers try to get very literal and direct about their messaging during current events, it can just come off as really heavy handed. But here, here we can see Grandma Mamucha and Dad incorporating self-isolation into their collection in a really subtle and rather successful way, I think. This is the biggest single collaboration in recent memory, or maybe ever. I mean, I can't really think of another time when two powerhouse designers have come together for a long-term collaboration like this. This is, this is historic stuff. And when there's a new creative direction at a house, in this case, half of a new creative direction at a house, there's always a, a few seasons at least of them laying some groundwork for where this is going to go in the future under this same leadership. But usually when that groundwork is being laid, the show itself is pretty boring and that doesn't happen here, which is fantastic news. So join me as we together dive into this collection in a very nuanced way and figure out what exactly it is that Raph and Muccia are doing at Prada. If you're anything like me, you probably do not have a lot of fashion friends in real life. Most of your fashion nerddom comes out on the internet with other people that are like-minded. The best possible way to learn more about fashion in general is to be part of a larger community that is focused on fashion where everyone is learning and asking questions and teaching each other what they know. And uh, the best fashion community on the internet is the Discord that is a perk to my Patreon. It's a very tight-knit community. Everybody in there is incredibly friendly. Everyone uh, just gasses each other up about fits and then asks really good nuanced questions about the world of fashion and a lot of people kind of puzzle it through it together or some people come in who are experts and just answer the questions. I'm literally on there all day. I love being part of that community and if you want to join it, join the Patreon. You also get exclusive episodes, you get extended episodes for some of the runway analyses videos and you get to play back all of the live streams. But more importantly, you get to join the best fashion community on the internet. Do it up. Okay, so the number one thing that is striking about this collection right off rip is this environment that the models are walking in. Everything is technically different. We have these very fuzzy walls, we have this marbled floor, we have all of these different textures, things that you kind of want to reach out and touch. But it all has this very nightmare tinged feeling to it, sort of like everything is running together. I know that when I'm personally having nightmares, I'm often in spaces where it feels kind of like this, where the walls seem to be indefinitely high, the rooms seem to be just strangely open and empty, there seems to be these strange textures everywhere and you there aren't really doors they're just kind of the openings in walls they've done a really delicate balance here because these spaces are profoundly beautiful these are very striking aesthetically pleasing spaces but they do have this kind of smoldering darkness to them and it has this sort of feeling and this is where it gets very very nuanced that I like a lot it, it sort of has this feeling of running together, sort of like how like if you've spent too much time in a single space, the space just kind of stops feeling real, sort of like if you say a word enough times, you start to kind of feel like you made it up. And the master stroke of that kind of running togetherness is these uh, chairs that they end up sitting on for the talkback. They did a similar thing last season where they had these kind of monolithic benches that they sat on to answer these questions, but the, the chairs in this season's talkback specifically was uh, an absolute masterstroke, I love it. I get reminded a little bit of James Turrell's work. This is kind of almost like James Turrell if it was indoors. And James Turrell's work has been done indoors before, but it often feels so expansive that you could almost like float off into it, whereas this definitely feels 
uh, spacious but claustrophobic somehow. It feels like you are trapped here. As well, when I saw it, I was immediately reminded of Raph Simmons' set for the runway show that he did during the documentary Dior and I, where we had this floor-to-ceiling flower maze. Raph seems to really enjoy these environments that are a uh, completely one thing, and they do make for incredible pictures. This kind of nightmarish, claustrophobic, too much of the same thing environment was sort of emphasized by a short DJ set that was done by Plastic Man, which is one of the aliases of the legend legendary techno DJ Richie Houghton. Richie was fulfilling his role as DJ for this project. I don't think these are original songs by Richie. I, I couldn't ID the first one, but the second one is a song called Mi Chica by Ferter? P-F-I-R-T-E-R. Ferter? Anyway, like a lot of techno, it's very cold and there's a lot of repetition, so it's sort of fits with this environment perfectly. And maybe the best part of the kind of nightmarish repetition of this is that this uh, this collection was obviously made under quarantine, and the easiest way to do a digital runway show like that is to bring in models one at a time, not have a big group of people all clustered together, because then you'd have to test everybody and everything else. So you bring in people one at a time, put them through hair and makeup, get them dressed, and then have them walk through the space one by one. But what this allowed them to do is they could repeat models for multiple looks. There's a few different examples of where they use the same guy way later in the show, you know, 24 looks later, they repeat the same guy, but all these models have a very distinct look. So if you are at all a visual type of person, you would have at some point been like, wait, have we seen that guy before? I could have sworn I saw that guy at the beginning of the show. Okay, am I going crazy? Are they repeating people? It sort of emphasizes this trippy, confusing, claustrophobic, things running together type of feeling. And for me, this is also interesting because it so perfectly reflects the slowly going crazy feeling that a lot of us have while we're self-isolating at home. If you're anything like me and you have to work from home, there's very little reason to go out for anything. I mean, you go to the grocery store, you might need to go get your car fixed or something, but for the most part, you're in your space. And I personally love my living space. My parents have a very cool house. But when you spend enough time within a single space and don't go any other places and don't really do a whole lot else, everything kind of starts to run together and it sort of feels very, uh, the space feels unreal at a certain point. And this is what I meant by having a really subtle way of expressing what's going on in current events. This is not them, uh, you know, putting masks on everybody with a statement like, you know, like, wear a mask. Like, you should wear a mask, but I don't need fashion designers to tell me that. So it's not them getting like overly preachy about anything, and it's not them trying to make some really ham-fisted point about something having to do with contemporary events. It's them taking the zeitgeist of the era, something that we are all very mutually feeling, and it is expressing that in a way that isn't making itself abundantly clear. That level of subtlety and that level of nuance and self-awareness in the culture, that that's the kind of thing that makes really good art. Last season, during the talkbacks that Grandmama and Dad do, they were asked this really excellent question about uniforms and what is the, the Prada uniform. I am very happy with this question. Both of them talked themselves about their own uniforms for life because they said that the, the Prada uniform is not really something where they're trying to imitate a, uh, a occupation's uniform. They're not trying to do like Raph said, like a police officer's uniform or a military uniform. They're thinking about uniform in a much more personal way where it's like, these are the clothes that I'm able to consistently come back to. Raph apparently has been wearing Prada for 10 and another source he said 15 years. He really likes Prada. He's a Prada fanboy himself. My personal uniform is usually quite simple, black pants. Prada, not because I work here. And that's what everything else in their wardrobe kind of has to revolve around. So it's a very common thing in just about every single runway show where they are proposing this kind of base layer uniform for their client base. And it's interesting because in this show, especially with the, the onset of RAF, they've kind of proposed an entirely new uniform here, and that is this jumpsuit that's for men. This harkens back to one of RAF's most defining pieces from his early career, which is this skinny suit. And as most guys know, when a suit gets skinny enough, when you bring it and parse it down close enough to your body, eventually you just lose a lot of mobility and it doesn't feel very good. Whereas with this, the, the jumpsuit, that's something where you have a lot of range of motion, but it is maximally skinny. So he's able to maintain this like kind of skinnier than skinny suiting silhouette while still making it something that is a feasible wear for a lot of men. Raph goes one skinnier. If you look at it long enough, it just looks like somehow someone has managed to make PJs something that you would actually want to wear outside. Because this idea of a men's bodysuit is not something that's being proposed for the first time here. There are other houses that have proposed the same idea before. This is the first time that I've ever seen this in a way that it looks like a pretty reasonable pitch. And either way, whether it's gonna end up being something that people wear on their own or not, it's being pitched here predominantly as a really fun layering piece. 
And boy, do they show that off. We get some incredible clips of these boys dancing around in this stuff. These clips make me incredibly happy. I love seeing this, it's so much fun. And the dancing in particular is a great little proposal here because it resolves a question that we all had about grandmama and dad working together in the first place. When this collaboration was first announced, by Pamboy, the god. Everyone seemed really excited about it happening, but there was this lingering question of how this was going to work with the different design philosophies. Raph Simmons has kind of made his career doing this very like sexless, techno, kind of like don't touch me kind of look to all of his clothes. Whereas Prada as a house has been built up for women as this very like intellectual luxuriousness kind of thing. I don't know if sexiness is the centerpiece of what they do there, but I don't think anyone would deny that Prada is very sexy. So how do these come together? How do sexlessness and sexy work together? Well, it turns out that the current events was the perfect solution to this thing because the idea of these like boys dancing on their own in this huge empty space that sort of represents this this kind of lonely, isolated existence, that ends up being the perfect thing. These things are very close to their body, the body suits are very close to their bodies, and there's a lot of things that have to do with the sensation of touch. And you can feel in this stuff that there is a longing to be touched and to connect with people again. The whole idea of techno is that you're dancing by yourself and it's a very self-contained thing, but there's also an element of community with that. So seeing someone dancing on their own and like being alone in a space, but not with this room full of other people, that to me seems like the perfect mixture of those two things, where it's like you're kind of taking on this almost a sexiness feel in a way of saying like, I, I so long to be touched again. But these bodysuits are not made of the same thing that normal bodysuits are made of, right? Usually it's this like stretchy plastic material. These are made of very tactile textiles. They're, they're made of a, a boucle tweed and of a mohair. These are textiles that are all about sensation and feeling. And most of that comes down to what the wearer themselves is feeling. And this balance of the sexlessness and sexiness is just like what Raph said in the after show talk back dialogue thing where he said this show is a lot of it is about a balance of hardness and softness it's pretty incredible that this awful thing that has happened to everyone in the world is something that has actually turned out the the one little silver lining to this entire thing is that it kind of presented an environment where these two designers that might have struggled a little bit more to see common ground with their designs that kind of gave them that common ground to sort of bridge the gap between their two different philosophies. And the best part about all of this is that that dancing was not a planned part of the show. The models came in and just a few of them started just kind of like moving around to the music that they had them walking to. And they were like, this is great, please keep going. And they just like let them like dance and like flail around a little bit. In Grandmama Mucha and Dad's conversation that they did a few weeks ago is moderated by Vanessa Friedman. Raph mentioned that their job as designers is like a bridge. Um, and he described it as an aesthetic reaction to the system. And I, I think that this show encapsulates that so well, that this is a very literally a reaction to the thing rather than trying to like tell a statement at you about what's going on in the world. It is them just reacting to it in a very subtle, but um, I think very successful way. Another huge detail of this show is this overhaul of the Prada Triangle logo, maybe one of the more iconic logos in all of men's fashion. And I assume through the influence of Raf, they've changed that now to be more of a textured uh, emblem statement thing rather than just a logo of the brand. I, I love that. I mean, there's certainly lots of cases where uh, a logo and branding can be something that is a very purposeful, interesting part of the design, but more often than not, it's just a business move because a lot of people buying these clothes just want other people to think they're rich, so they want the thing to say the name of the brand on it. As far as fashion as art goes, that's usually not our best moment. But this, I actually really, really like. This this change up of the logo is such an interesting, cool way of doing it that, uh, that makes it compelling. Like I, I want a piece with that logo on it. And it's also a great representation of Raph's contribution to this entire thing with him being the master of knits and everything. It, it's, a, it's a cool way of kind of adding his signature without being overly blatant about it. One thing that definitely seemed like it was missing were the invite suitcases. I was almost positive that that was gonna end up being an accessory. A, a few days before the show, a lot of people who are very good customers and people in the fashion industry started receiving these suitcases that were very fuzzy, had the texture of the walls that 
opened up and had the invite to watch it digitally along with some like chocolates and stuff. And I mean, look at this thing. This is like made to be an accessory, but we didn't see it in the show. I don't know. The people that received them are like for sure gonna be seen carrying those around because they're so cool looking. Also cannot move forward until we talk about the gloves. It's very possible that these were inspired by the, uh, the mittens slash fingerless glove things that we've all used at some point, probably in childhood. But this approach for these is so cool looking. Like I, I want a pair of these so badly. It plays very well into the Death Stranding mentality that every surface on your body is an opportunity for more box shaped storage. All in all, this show is meant to lay the groundwork for dad's work at Prada in collaboration with our awesome Grandmama Mucha. The first collection, usually the first few collections of a house with a, a new designer or when a new designer is involved, uh, they're very staid most of the time. Uh, sometimes they're even kind of weak, like not even very good. But I mean, here we see Dad and Mucha work with some very strong statements. There's plenty to build off of for the future. I actually, I, as far as a men's show is concerned, especially at a luxury house, I absolutely loved this show. I'm, I'm really excited that I woke up early enough to watch the live stream for it. And if this was helpful to you, I'm an independent fashion critic. This is my job, this is my income. Join the Patreon. You get lots of perks. Most notably, you get to join the greatest fashion community on the internet. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I love you all a lot. I will talk to you later.